Hi, I'm going to show you how to sharpen end mills with a grinding fixture on the surface grinder. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. I want to show you how to sharpen end mills with a grinding fixture on your surface grinder. Now this one here is just a cheap Chinese knockoff. And what's interesting is I've been trying to find information on how to use this. And I got to say, I found almost no information. This old Tony did a video on one of these. With one of these and a surface grinder, you can sharpen the ends of your mills. And I want to build on the video that he did. Now you can buy these fixtures for about $45, $50. They come with either a 5C collet or an ER collet. I am going with the 5C collet because almost everything I have in my shop is for 5C collets. And the grinding fixture itself, it's very simple, but it's taken me hours and hours and hours to figure out the geometry, the methodology behind using it. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So with this grinding fixture, and a surface grinder, you can set it up and rotate this for different cutters. So I'm going to show you how to do a two flute cutter. And to be honest, the two flute cutter is the most complicated one, in my opinion, to sharpen. I know it doesn't make sense. But with this, we can index this wheel into 12 different positions. Right now, we're just going to start over to zero angles. You can see this block is askew in all sorts of ways. This angle here, is two degrees. This angle here is five degrees. And then you tip it on end and get 30 degrees. And these correspond with an end mill. Now I've got an old end mill here. It's been sharpened incorrectly. And what's interesting is when you start sharpening your end mills, you're going to discover how many of your end mills have already been sharpened by somebody else, not the factory. So what we've got here is we need five degrees here, 30 degrees here and here, and then two degrees from this point to this point, so the center's a little bit lower. Let's talk about the nomenclature or the physical names of everything. We have, of course, our main cutting edge. We've got two on this one. This surface here, which we also get to sharpen, is called the tooth face. We have a clearance angle on here, and also here and here. So we got three clearance angles. This flat area here we call the land. And of course here is the helical angle. In here, which is a little harder to see sometimes, is there's a chip breaker. And that chip breaker is really important because we have to understand where it is in relationship to everything or we grind it away and makes it very ineffective. So that's what I'm gonna show you right now now, it is always going to be in this orientation. So made in China is always going to be facing towards me. Now, my wheel turns clockwise, and that's really important to understand. This screw, like I've already talked about, comes out, and we can turn this and clock it and lock it into position. Now, most of these have a detent ball bearing in it to help lock over to the next position. I actually took mine out because I sometimes like to take this out to tighten up the collet. And we're going to push this right up against the fence. You may have to put some sort of parallel in here, no matter how your machine is set up. Now here's where everything is the most critical, is clocking the cutter to the right angle. And when I was talking about the chip breaker here, as you can see there's just kind of a little half moon here and here, that is really critical to keep. And when we line this up, that's what our goal is. So if we were to line this up in the cutter to where it was at this angle, it's going to cut this away. We want to get it so it's just out far enough away to where this point and this edge are almost identical without grinding off this corner. And it's actually simple to do. We're going to pull out a set of angle blocks and we're going to actually just grab 
the two degree angle block. The angle block, I want the thick side of the angle block on my right hand side. And I'm going to literally just bring it in here and line this up to where those two points work together. I always try to make sure this edge is just a touch further away just to make sure. Two degrees is an arbitrary number. That's what I've come up with. You might find that three works better for you. You'll just have to test it. Now we've got that lined up. We're going to tighten up the collet so our cutter doesn't move. I am starting over with a cutter that has been flattened off from the top. And I did that just so you can see more accurately the shape of the cutter where you can see where the chip breaker is here and here. And again, what I'm trying to do is get this point and this point to be lined up almost 180 degrees to each other, actually about two degrees off. So when this gets shaved away, we're just missing those corners because we want to keep those corners. That's kind of the magic key. I talked about that there's two positions this really goes into. We have the low position, position A, and then position B. And I'm going to sharpen this in a way that you wouldn't think. So we're going to sharpen the tooth face first, and that also gives us this angle. And this is something else I want to talk about is these relief angles here are not going to be the same when you grind them with this as it was from the factory. The factories will always be different than what you're doing. You don't have to match up the factory grind. It would be great if you could, but this fixture, to be honest, is not going to do that. And that was one of the things I was struggling with when sharpening this. And by studying other bits that were commercially sharpened, or I should say brand new cutters, I discovered that they all have their own kind of geometry. So we're going to sharpen this one in the up position. Then we rotate it 90 degrees. We're going to sharpen the secondary clearance angle. And then, and that's going to be done in the up position. Then we're going to lower it. And we're going to sharpen the top edge. Now, you don't have to do it in this exact order. You can do the primary edge first, then the secondary, then the third if you want to. I found out it's working better for me to do it the way that I just showed you. So let's get this set up. We'll bring in our magnet. And I'm going to come in to work a little that way. What I'm trying to do is get these corners so they match up. And I'm doing that basically by trial and error. Cut a little bit, rotate it 180 degrees, and do each surface until I've got it. Now, as you get better at this, you're going to be able to do it faster. I can now cut, sharpen an end mill in about five minutes. Well, I can do it as fast as three minutes if I'm just doing a quick touch-up on one that I've already sharpened. Like I said, when you're working with cutters from other companies that have already been sharpened from the factory, it's not going to match up to this. This one here actually is set up with these particular angles, as I understand in the books, to be good for a half inch cutter, you know, in that ballpark. So a quarter inch, five eighths, it's a good average. The angles change as the cutters get bigger and smaller, but this one is perfect for what I'm doing. So now we have the tooth face sharpened. You can see how nice this is in here, nice and clean. We still have our chip breaker here, and we're lining up right here. It's 
close. It could be a little bit better, but to save time, we're just going to use it. Now, we're going to keep in the up, and we're going to rotate this 90 degrees. Now we're going to do the secondary clearance angle. You have to inch in on this because the geometry should be that I should just be able to rotate it and everything lines up. Well, that's not going to happen. We're going to transverse with the z-axis. Now you know if you've cut this too deep is if you end up cutting, if you end up grinding on that primary edge. That's bad. Don't want to do that. So now we're going to go to the flat position. We're going to sharpen the land and the land is going to Gives us a little thickness here. It also gives us just a little slightly different angle for a relief angle. And it brings the point here down a little lower. So, so when this is cutting, it's working more on the outer edges. So there we are. Now technically, I went a little too deep on this here, and these don't line up exactly. They should look more like this. Actually, that's a bad example too. It's not that critical, but it is a sign of quality work when those do line up correctly. Now we're going to simply stone this, get rid of the burrs that we've developed, and I'm going to take you over the mill and show you how well it worked. The cheap, the cheap, the cheap bastard.